Welcome to Greenville Grit, Greenville Residents in Touch on 103.7 WTIB. This is the local show that keeps you connected with the issues that are happening and affecting your community. Greenville Grit is sponsored by Greenville Toyota, Ribeyes, and Overton Residential Properties. Now, here are your hosts, Terry Williams and Michael Overton. Getting ready to find out everything that's happening in Uptown Greenville and maybe a little bit of other information here today with Bianca Shoneman. And she is with Uptown Greenville, and you are the president and CEO of Uptown Greenville. Is that's that right, correct? Terry. You got it. I got it right this time. Yeah. So we're going to start some conversations with you and let you tell everybody a little bit about yourself in just a few minutes. But first, let's thank our sponsors. We want to thank Ribeye Steakhouse. If you want a great meal or you want to have a party or a baby shower, they have a room that you can go in and have a nice meal uh, over on Fire Tower Road. I'm sure they would love to accommodate you. They have great steaks, an awesome salad bar. They also have a location over in Williamston so you can have a great party over there if you're visiting anything in Williamston area they'd love to have you over there as well so we thank them so much for continuing to help us and sponsor our show we also want to thank Overton Residential Properties if you're looking to buy a new home or you have a house you want some help in selling you can contact me Terry Williams or Michelle Connors we would be glad to help you you can also go to our website at Overton Residential Dot com and we'll be glad to help you with that. So we're going to take a break and then we're going to get right back into our discussion with Bianca and find out what's happening in Uptown Greenville. We'll be right back. Kids have Welcome back to our show. We're going to just go right into our conversation with Bianca today. I'm going to let her tell you a little bit about what Uptown Greenville does and I think it has a really large board a lot we of do. involvement a, you need a lot of volunteers it seems like a lot of times but just sort of tell us all about uptown greenville and then if you want to just go into then we've got a lot of up, upcoming events sunday in the park just a lot of things going on so i'll just yeah. let you kind of tell us all about it okay terry so organizations like uptown greenville exist all across the globe mm -hmm. as a matter of fact um the affiliate organization of Uptown Greenville is the International Downtown Association, okay. and it exists in over 800 locations. Wow. So it has <laughs> membership organizations <laughs> in 800 locations throughout the globe. I mean, right. everywhere from Europe to Asia to um, to North America, Central yeah. America, everybody is downtowning. Mm -hmm. You know, urbanization is very popular. Right. And uh, Greenville is drinking that tea right mm -hmm. now. We're excited about the growth and progress. But most people forget that we are are an independent 501c3 organization. We are not a branch of the city of Greenville mm -hmm. or the county government. We exist um, as, as, as a standalone organization, and we've been around since 1984. So we are... Older than 30 right. years old wow. and um, mostly run uh, for the, probably the first uh, 25 years on volunteer energy. Mm -hmm. And frankly, uh, the work that we're doing right now is uh, – Really, we're just reaping the benefits of that 25-year mm -hmm. volunteer board that existed because they really pave the way for a conversation to begin mm -hmm. to take place and really get seated um, in Uptown Greenville and our city government to, to talk about why center cities matter. So our downtown development organization has been around for 30 years. Currently, we exist with a staff of 2.5. Okay. Um, we have a 30-person board of directors that meets quarterly, and we're accepting applications applications at all times from downtown merchants, property mm -hmm. owners, land developers, and nonprofits that are located within the central business district. Uh, average citizens are welcome to apply, but it is stipulated in our bylaws that mm -hmm. someone who is affiliated with the downtown in some fashion okay. um, should should would mm -hmm. get preferential treatment during an application process. Um, you know, our chart of work is varied. We have, of course, we're probably most notorious throughout the community for our events, right. but we also engage in public policy discussions mm -hmm. and strong service advocates and marketing arms for new businesses, new developments, right. and create li liaison opportunities between the local government and the merchant community. Uh, downtown development organizations, like I said earlier, exist mm -hmm. all across the globe. Probably the most uh, notorious of them is the Times Square Alliance, which is responsible for doing the 
the New Year's celebration. Right. And right. Um, the, the, it's the most visited mm-hmm. business improvement district in all of the world. Right. You know, experiencing over a million people, mm-hmm. you know, every two or three days. It's right. a huge district. <laughs> um, so it's an exciting time for downtown because we are talking about urbaniz- urbanization right. and we're excited to see things unfold. That's right. Well, there is so much going on right now. Um, Let's switch just a little bit. I would like to ask you, what do you think the impact's going to be when all of the people start moving in the yeah. new apartments that are almost complete? I believe I've seen um, online, of course, on yeah. Facebook, that they're taking applications. I don't know yeah. how that's going. I hadn't had a chance to ask anybody. Sure. But I don't even know at this point how many um, residents each building can hold. But obviously, they're large. <laughs> they are big, yeah. And what impact do you think that's going to have on all these businesses that are opening now, the new restaurants and different things, and, and regular retailers, and hopefully bringing even more retailers? Because I think under one building, I heard there might be as much as 9,000 square feet of retail possibilities. Yeah. So what do you think kind of impact that might have, not just on Uptown, sure. but drawing people from you know the rest of the city to the Uptown area? Yeah, it's definitely a broader issue mm-hmm. than just our central business district. So I'm glad you brought that up. Right. Um, so just to give you hard numbers here, we have mm-hmm. two apartment complexes that are opening up in the central business district right. and a third one opening up in the proximity of the central mm-hmm. business district. The 10th Street, Eastern on 10th uh, development will also open up. It's my understanding that they're doing fairly well with their recruitment of residents. Uh, the two that are downtown are both gather uptown right. and then sidewalk the or sorry sidewalk it's called um, the dickinson uh lofts and then university edge right. and each of those holds upwards of 400 beds wow. so that is an 800 plus if they come mm-hmm. online at 100 percent capacity mm-hmm. increase to our residential population in wow. the central business district and let's say that again 800 new people <laughs> so you can you know it's sort of the equivalent if you look at it to the recruitment of new jobs Mm-hmm. Jobs. When you bring in 800 new people right. to a specific area, that has a big in- impact on your local economy. Exactly. So in this case, if we bring in 800 people mm-hmm. to our residential fabric of the central business district, we're going to see an uptick in, in, in walkability. We're going to see more people using the sidewalks, the bike lanes, right. on-street parking, etc., as their permanent parking mm-hmm. and as a way to navigate throughout mm-hmm. downtown and to connect to the university, likely their permanent so- or their main source right. of um, activity. And it's also going to hopefully, we we hope, uh, bring more of the students downtown. You know, mm-hmm. one of the things we really want to see moving forward in our what's next for Uptown Greenville is how do we get the students better engaged in our campus edge right. conditions? Um, there's a conversation taking place right now, very relevant to the long term vision of the Central Business District is in the absence of student engagement, in the absence of um you know, great relationships mm-hmm. between the university and the city, which is not the case. The university and the city get along just fine. Mm-hmm. But as we move forward, we need to encourage good dialogue mm-hmm. and good policies that support uh, students coming off campus right. and using uh, dollars downtown. Mm-hmm. And of course, that help us communicate each way about happenings right. on, on campus so the general public knows what's happening on mm-hmm. ECU's campus outside of athletics. And um, same way is true so that students know how great the city really is right. and that's something we I think is is a big question for what's next for Greenville uh, you know especially as we bring 800 new residents mm-hmm. to our central business district in August that's right now one of the buildings is geared not necessarily geared to students is that is the University Edge you know the one closer to yeah. Dickinson is open to more than just students am I incorrect about that or is no it just you're absolutely students? correct about that mm-hmm. I believe they have um uh, I'm going to get it wrong, but I'm going to say 60 uh, uh-huh. units that are dedicated for market rate right. tenants. Right. And uh, that means anyone could apply. Mm-hmm. So, Terry, if you're ready to move and mm-hmm. downsize and, you know, you love the idea of being in close proximity to the Greenway right. or some of your favorite restaurants, then moving into the Dickinson mm-hmm. lofts is an option right. for you. Right. Uh, you won't be required to show your student ID at the <laughs> time of application. That sounds like But did you save yours? <laughs> Tell the truth. Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 it's long gone. That that would be certainly an option. And you'd be surprised, but a lot of people coming from larger cities yeah. that are used to living that lifestyle yeah. have looked for that in the past, and we have not had that to offer. 
No, but we do now. And now we do. And, and so, I think we're going to see yeah. more of that type of uh, so redevelopment too. happen. Mm-hmm. Happen, And uh, there's good. There's a big amount of, of, of land trading happening in the central right. business district and sort of around the central business district. And we're hoping to see uh, a diversification to our housing stock right. happen uh, within and around the central mm-hmm. business district, mm-hmm. mainly because there is a national trend towards uh, smaller uh, units right. that um, can affect um, in, um, a growing um, um, empty nester mm-hmm. crowd mm-hmm. and uh, for young millennials right. and even for families alike, there is a real intrigue. I mean, Durham, Durham has a lot of success right. in their adjacent grids, historic mm-hmm. grids like we have. Right. Um, their downtown is sort of sandwiched between two residential mm-hmm. un- residential um, districts, just like Uptown Greenville is. And those property values have consistently gone up mm-hmm. in and around the fringe right. of downtown because people are intrigued by the notion of walkability, having great That's access right. to events, libraries, you know, local government, uh, civic participation. Mm-hmm. So right. uh, we certainly believe that a diversification in the housing mm-hmm. stock would not only be good for real estate and real right. estate professionals, it's just really good for the sort of prognosis of the city moving forward. Exactly. One thing that I'm going to see a need for already do because I work in the uptown area yeah. already, our office is there, is there is no grocery store. Close yeah, by. I know. I would love to see something come. I've seen it. I'm sure you all have too. And there's a complex in the North Hills area yeah. of Raleigh and they have a grocery store. They have a Harris Teeter Harris that has Teeter. an underground parking deck. Yes. <laughs> but um, I don't know if we'll get that, but it, I would mm-hmm. love to see something smaller perhaps yeah. because there wouldn't be room for a full size, obviously. Sure. Uh, but under like the university edge or something like that where, you know, people could access grocery shopping Oh yeah. in the area because I believe not only the students and the residents that live in the area would use it, but the people who are working in the area headed home could just stop there for some quick things rather than, you know, go into the larger outskirts. Not that we don't still use those, but it would be right. nice for for short trips. So yeah, I can see I that. I can agree. see the need, I can see the need for that. Well, you know what I'm going to do, Terry, is when I leave here, I'm going to call Michael Overton <laughs> and I'm going to tell him about your request yeah, for let's a grocery do that. store let's downtown because do I hear that he's one of our our largest commercial brokers in the uptown district. I think that's an awesome idea. So okay, I'll, well, I'll I will follow do that. Up that as well. Okay. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about what's going on in the town common because okay. we do have a lot of events coming up. We do. Um, one big event coming up next week, I mm-hmm. think, and um, and so I'll let you talk about some things that are going to be happening there. We got Sunday in the Park, and then the concert. Yeah, so you're absolutely right. Uh, first on deck is Sunday in the Park, That's right. and Sunday in the Park is every Sunday from seven to eight p.m. It's an open air evening event. Mm-hmm. Uh, children are welcome, families are welcomed, anybody is welcome. Dogs, even <laughs> cats on leashes, of course, those mm-hmm. crazy cats. Uh, but it's a live music event, right. uh, food trucks, um, just a good time to come out and hear some live music exactly um on wednesday of next week which would be the 13th of june we're going to turn up the volume a little bit and we have an eagles tribute band Mm -hmm. um interbanks media group is sponsoring Mm -hmm. this event alongside of the city of greenville and our organization uptown greenville there's several good community partners too Mm -hmm. involved in it but henry has secured uh some superheroes uh a seven foot tall unicorn and a 25 foot tall gorilla that we'll all get to play with and potentially name, um, which is always a fun thing to do. Yeah. But I hear this uh, Eagles tribute band, Terry, is one of the nation's top rated Eagle tribute bands. I think they just got some recognition for that. I know. I heard something, but mm-hmm. let's call it a Grammy. <laughs> they got the Grammy Award for cover banding <laughs> okay. the Eagles. <laughs> That's not true, by the way. Right, right, <laughs> But right. something like that. That's exactly right. <laughs> then there's one other concert planned, I believe, for yeah. a little bit later on. Yeah, there is. That'll be on July 11th okay. and uh, it'll be uh, Coastline um, oh yeah yeah a fantastic shagging beach music that's right beach music do you know them be fun. what can you say yeah, about Coastline no, no, I just we love the music do love you them. okay yeah, great absolutely. well I can't wait to see you there because yeah, we have food trucks and wine mm-hmm. and beer and uh, water features for the children so I think it's a good time for everybody mm-hmm. and you'll get yeah. to meet some community partners that help pull, pull it off and that's right you know I love the town commons because it's a soft environment sometimes mm-hmm. when we host events at free boot Friday or five points plaza you know it's a concrete right. jungle if you would but the town common provides an opportunity to be in parkland where you can that's bring right. your folding chairs it's mm-hmm. a softer more ambient opportunity to right. engage you can do so much more on the town common yeah that's right and mm-hmm. there's a couple of things there's a lot of things going on there right now uh, a whole lot of construction looks yes. like it doesn't have the appearance that we'd like for it to look like right now but mm-hmm. it, they've got bathrooms going in we know they about do. that and a little bit of construction on the town creek culvert so but we don't want them to be, you to be discouraged 
come anyway because you can still navigate yes, and get yes. around and get to what you want to get around to. And if you're coming for the concerts and you're concerned about your kids, you still have the park. That's and right. And you can still hear the music and participate. Yeah, you can. And take them over there to the park and let them play. And, you know, mm -hmm. you can still see what's going on. So You can still be a great. part of the event. The Trillium Park at Town Common is part of the festival space there. That's right. Um uh, you know, also you mentioned some of the construction that's happening yeah. at the Town Common. They are adding a really beautiful pergola inside mm -hmm. of the Trillium Park, which should help add some shade right. for parents that stand out and play with their mm -hmm. children or keep an eye on their children while their children play, which I think will be a nice feature. Right. And then, of course, the Sycamore Hill Baptist Memorial Church, um, Sycamore, Hill Memorial, Sycamore Hill Memorial is going to be uh, under construction mm -hmm. starting in the fall of 2018. Right. And this particular installation uh, is going to be a, a breath taking mm -hmm. memorial and should really add a, a draw for the central business right. district so and if you haven't been able to ride by and see the flags that have yes been put the in, field of honor it is just wonderful it is I really took, nice um, a, a client by okay. earlier this week uh, as we were going through a tour and let them see it and sort of explained what it yeah. was all about and it's it's really neat to see that i yeah, wish I we could see it a little bit better without the construction but still it's yeah. awesome to look at well it's all getting so, started and yeah. i think that's what's exciting about being in the city of greenville is life is afoot right yeah. it's an opportunity right. to be engaged uh, mm -hmm. in political decisions and there's plenty of opportunity to become a retailer uh, with right. all the new office space and yeah. uh, retail space opening up not only in uptown greenville but throughout the city That's right. and um, you know I, I really like potential I like the potentiality that Greenville uses oh yes oh, it's, it's just an exciting time right it now. is well we're gonna take a short break and come back and wrap up our discussion with everything that's going around in uptown Greenville and remind you all again so that you can all attend all the festivities that are happening so we'll be right back welcome Welcome back to our show. We have been talking about everything that's going on in Uptown Greenville. It's so exciting. It's yeah. exciting times. And we haven't even hit on the ECU baseball for the last weekend. Oh, yeah. I did want to talk about that just a little bit because sure. it not only impacted Uptown, but really all of the city. And we're yeah. so proud of the team. And I did want to mention that. And I'm sure everybody on a lot of people on um, the board that yeah. serve with you are ECU graduates and of course supporters and I so know they were excited we had a player yesterday that was drafted oh we did and um the was William Sutton oh and, that's uh, great so going with the San Diego Padres I think so that's exciting news and I think a few others are waiting to hear so that was really exciting and um and I'm sure you know we're, it was still a great season so yeah. that was good for us and good for the morale of the city so I was excited about that um, I think you said earlier when we were discussing things before that there's some policy coming up about everybody would be real excited to hear what might be going on about outdoor dining. Yeah. Because especially this time of the year when everybody wants to get outside as much as they can. So what's happening with that? Sure. So... You know, outdoor dining is one of those markers of um, a downtown success. Mm -hmm. It's really easy to track the vitality of a central business district right. based on the number of outdoor dining tables and chairs mm -hmm. that they have. As a matter of fact, our friends over in downtown Pittsburgh, which is notoriously a cold weather climate city, uh, track the vitality of their CBD um, based on the number mm -hmm. of chairs and tables that they provide during their warm summer months. Wow. So they see it mm -hmm. as an indicator of economic health for their municipality. Right. Uh, green Greenville is having a conversation coming up. There's going to be two public information, in, information sessions on June 21st and June 22nd, hosted by the city's, uh, the city's Office of Economic Development, mm -hmm. to learn more information about how a policy could be rewritten to better serve the restaurateurs mm -hmm. um, to ensure that they do participate in the outdoor dining matrix. Um, we currently have a policy right now that has not been uh, as uh, inviting mm -hmm. as many merchants would like it to be. Mm -hmm. And they'd like to see uh, the regulatory environment become more flexible right. for them to engage in the process of doing outdoor dining. Mm -hmm. I think this is both timely right. and very necessary mm -hmm. for sort of what's next for downtown. Right. Yeah. Well, we've grown so much. We, we have, have so many more restaurants we do. to offer everyone now. And it's just it's very exciting. It is. And it's a variety it of is. different kinds of food. And that makes it even, you know, even better. So yeah. that I hope I do hope they'll look at that again. As I told you earlier, yeah. I'd taken a picture. I was out of town and they had yeah. some outdoor dining. I took a picture and sent it in to someone here in Greenville thinking 
please, let's do this. Let's try it. It's yes. just so, I think it's, you know, I think it's vital that we do some of the things because, like I said before, we are the size town we are. It's a great, um, it's a great size town to live in. But people moving here from larger areas um, want to come and find some of the same things they're leaving. And yes. that's just a small thing that they're used to having. And, mm -hmm. and I don't really understand why we can't have it. So I I'm agree hoping with you. that that will happen as well. Yeah, me too. So, you know, it's funny that you say that about the number of mm -hmm. uh, restaurants that have opened up. When right. I started with Uptown Greenville in 2012, we had 18 restaurants on what we call the Eat Up Guide. Right. Today we have 35 restaurants oh, on that same guide with the same boundaries. So in the last five years, we've uh -huh. seen that number nearly double for the number of restaurants right. and breweries in our central business district. Mm -hmm. So when you think about dining, I think it's a great way right. to go is downtown because like you said, you can eat yourself away around the world. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's great. It's really great. Well, we have a couple of other things I want you to mention. Sure. Umbrella Market. Yeah, thank it you. It is tonight. It is tonight. So <laughs> if you're watching tonight, it's Terry, tonight. Terry, have you ever been to the Umbrella Market? <laughs> yes. Okay, it's do you love always, it? I love it. Yeah, it's so great. <laughs> it's always so hot. Why is it so hot? Tonight well, ought to be good. Tonight it's going to be good. It's not too yeah. hot tonight, <laughs> uh, but it is a... Um, a summertime That's event, right, exactly. so it sort of comes with the turf. Uh, it, tonight's the mac and cheese throwdown. Ooh. So we have several competitors from Rock Springs to um, uh, the Scullery are all entering their mac and cheese, oh, which is going to be delicious. Oh, and so gosh. for 10 bucks, you can come on site. You can purchase tickets uh, to the mac and cheese throwdown. And we have 70 plus vendors tonight, a food truck, and of course, um, live music and craft beer that and wine. That is great. Yeah. That is awesome. We're probably the only open air farmer's market in the state that Mm -hmm. happens at night. So I think that's something that's really unique about the umbrella market is I've been to, to Europe and many Latin American countries and sometimes they mm -hmm. do these things called night markets right. and they're wildly popular mm -hmm. and Greenville has one. Well, that is really great too mm -hmm. because then people you know can come after work. They don't have we might not have as great right. attendance if they if they were during the day and people can't get away. Right, especially so midweek. Nice, exactly. Mm -hmm. That is you awesome. know go to church, come by and say hi to us right before we close down at eight. That's right. That mm -hmm. is great. Well, one thing that you all do during the year this year I did not get to go, but last year yeah. I did is the state of the district. Yeah. Can you kind of tell the public how, what happens at the state of the district? Now? Yeah. Thank you for asking about that. That's our annual meeting. It's. Uh, Sort of a who's who of downtown mm -hmm. investment opportunities, uh, business owners, uh, local politicians, state and regional uh, elected officials. And what we do is we, first and foremost, we recognize those people that have contributed mm -hmm. to the rise of our central business district. So we give away awards. Right. We give away Urban Pioneer Awards, the Mover mm -hmm. and Shaker of the Year, Small Business of the Year, the People's Choice Awards. It's a lot of fun. It's really a time to sort of to unloose, loosen your tie a bit right. and to, to celebrate the success. Mm -hmm. So we give a recap of all the businesses that have opened mm -hmm. over the, the last calendar year. We look at the events that have happened and how that attendance has either grown or, right. or expanded, which it's only gone up, fortunately, since um, um, I've been tracking it with Uptown Greenville. Mm -hmm. We talk about um, real estate transactions right. and we talk about what's coming. Right. Uh, this, this past year, we had Bill King, who was mm -hmm. the vice president for Downtown Raleigh Alliance, come and speak to Raleigh's uh, downtown re renaissance. And Bill, I thought this was an interesting uh, comparison, noted that Raleigh's central business district celebrates a hundred and I think 25% mm. increase in their residential population. Do you know what Uptown Greenville's is? Let us know. It's 400%. Wow. So, uh, you know, I love Raleigh. I think they're up yeah. to big things too. And by no means is it an apple to apple comparison. Mm -hmm. But that one statistic really does stick with right. me. 124% in Raleigh CBD, 400% mm -hmm. in Uptown CBD. So that is very interesting. We have many, t many things to be happy about. And, um, you know, that State of the District event happens uh, every Feb mm -hmm. February. Mm -hmm. And it's truly just a time to check in and right. celebrate our successes and talk about how we move forward. Mm -hmm. And that is great. People really ought to follow that on your website so they can really get a good idea because it does give a recap if they haven't either haven't visited uptown yeah. um, or just don't know really all the businesses or, or retailers or whoever that have opened or come to the uptown area. That gives them a good idea, you know, right in writing they can see it on your website I'm it sure. does yeah, yeah yeah and we have an annual report that's downloadable okay. from the uptown greenville website mm -hmm. so please check that out it's readily available it's also uh for real estate professionals mm -hmm. or anybody that's interested you're welcome to stop by our office and pick up a free copy we love to share them with the general public and we have several thousand printed right now and they're right. a beautiful resource that highlights changes in our city and i think presents the city in a positive right. fashion right 
Okay, well, let me just ask you real quick. You can join Uptown Greenville. Is that yes, true? So thank you for asking that. Real that. Quick and then we'll uh, have we to wrap love to hear up. that. Thank you, Terry. So, <laughs> Uptown Greenville is an organization that's made up of business and individual members. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have some strong members like the University and Vidant Medical Center in the city of Greenville. But I'm also a personal member of mm-hmm. Uptown Greenville. So, if you're an individual and you like the work that we do, if you tend to our events, if you're a merchant in the Central Business District, we'd love to have you join. Right. You can learn more at uptowngreenville.com or by calling 252 one eight four zero zero. Laura Holtzman is our membership okay. director and can help out. That's great. Well, this has been a great discussion. You're always full of information <laughs> and you deliver it really well. And Thanks, we Terry. so appreciate you being here. I just talk too much. <laughs> no, no, it's great. So we thank you so much um, for joining us today. You can see us again on Friday night at 630, Saturday mornings at 930. And we hope that you will join us every Wednesday night at 630. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.